am Shemalane and welcome to the second video in the Saying Thanks series, which is a series of thank you cards from Shemal.com. Today I'm going to make this card or a card quite similar to this with two stamps, one that's a circular background stamp and then a thank you greeting. And I'm starting with a cream cardstock blank. So that looks like this, but what I want to do is start by cutting off part of the front section and using a border punch and then replacing that bit that I've cut off with some pattern paper. So I'm just going to unfold the card and take this to the paper trimmer and cut off about a third of the front of the card. So now that side's shorter, but I'd like to add a nicer edge or just something different than a straight line. So I'm going to be using this set of punches from American Crafts. They sent me this to try and it's called the Knockout and the, well, the punch system is called knockouts, and the idea is that you have one base, and then you can add all different cartridges to punch the design that you want. And I'm going to go with this scallop design, and inside you'll find these two little plastic pieces, which are quite important. So, what happens is these become the guides so that you can line it up, and on the back, there's two things to help you get them in the right direction in the right place. There's an A and then that matches the A here and then the rectangle is missing one tiny little corner and that fits so there's only one way it can fit in and stick flush. Um, and then the other one of course says B and has one corner missing so that side matches up as well. And then this piece fits inside and then it operates just like a normal border punch where this part punches down to um, punch the design across the paper. So just start and use this guide here to line my paper up with the edge. And then I can move the design along, keep it flush to the, um, the straight edge of the paper, and line it up with the guides and continue to punch along. Oh, then I missed one. <laughs> Go back and get that one right. So now I have the border punched edge along the bottom. Now I want to add um, some pattern paper to the bottom of the card and just line it up with the bottom. This one is a red on craft with polka dots and this one is the same collection Oops. but ever so slightly different patterns. So these are both from Pebbles and it's the With Love collection. So what I'm going to do is this has teeny tiny little hearts so I'm just turning it the right way so the hearts will line up. And then what I want to do is just replace the back there and then I'll cut it to fit. Now when I add something like this that then is going to create something on the back that can get um, a, little, a little messy because normally the inside of the card would be all nice and plain. So I can just, if I only have a little bit of the pattern paper, I can just line it up kind of as barely there and I can get more from the pattern paper that way but I would then leave that strip here so if I have plenty of the pattern paper and it's nice on both sides so this is printed both sides then I'll line it up and actually cut the full size because then it will be prettier when I open up the card it won't be so many um, layers out of place so it just depends on what paper you're using and, and how much that worries you. And so I'm just going to add adhesive inside, line it up, and press it down. And then I just use the other side as a guide. And you can use a trimmer for this if you prefer. So now I have the front of the card and I'm just going to round the two bottom corners with a corner rounder. And 
Now, next thing I'm going to do is add just a row of rickrack. So it's going to go right across above the border punched edge. And what I tend to do is just um, take scrap paper off the side of my trimmer. So like when you get these kinds of strips that you cut off paper, this is what I use to do my ribbon gluing. So I'm just going to cut it to just about the right size. And I lay it on there and then I can just run my adhesive roller over the top without worrying if I get glue everywhere. There we go. That way it's really easy to press into place. And then I can just tidy that up by trimming off the edges. And now I can leave that for a little bit while I do the stamping and add everything to the top. So the first stamping bit I'm going to do is this circle and it's this stamp by Hero Arts which is called Flower Wood Background and it's a flower in a wood grain pattern and it's all in a circle. So I'm going to stamp that on craft cardstock. This is a sheet of craft cardstock but I've just sprayed a bit of white mist and a bit of shine or a glimmer over the top and it's, I've let it dry and I'm going to stamp the design over the top so that part of the design is shaded in white and part isn't. So I have the concentration of white at one point. And it doesn't really matter where. I tend to do a sheet like this and stamp or spray in the middle because then I can do all sorts of stamp designs around the edge and still get that effect. So um, I know for this first stamp it looks like I'm wasting a whole sheet of, of cardstock and I'm not because I'll go back and use other pieces of it. So I'm going to stamp this in brown dye ink. You can use any brown dye ink that you like. You just want an ink that's going to dry relatively fast because I'm not going to emboss it or anything. And this one, um, unfortunately, this is my favorite brown ink of all time. <laughs> but it's also long, long discontinued. They don't make this brand at all. Um, so just a brown ink that you like. So I apologize. This is my antique ink pad as it is. <laughs> it's not called that. It's called Amaretto Truffle and it's from the Fresco collection from Stamparosa. But it's a very, very old ink pad, but it's still working. It's my favorite brown. Okay, so this has lots of fine little design, or fine little lines, so I want to make sure they're all inked. And then I'm just going to place it so it's partially over the white, but partially not. And press it down. I know it always looks like I stamp, like I press it for a really long time, but it's because I'm not very strong. <laughs> so I have to be really sure. Oh, because see, that happens. Let me try one more time. Okay, let's see. Ah, oh, much better. Okay. So, now you can see where the white is just, it's more obvious on one part of the circle than the other. And I'm just going to cut this out and not worry too much about getting it perfect because I'm going to use a die to cut it um, to a perfect circle. And I'm using the Nestabilities dies in Standard Circle Small. It's the largest circle. Fits this just perfectly. Right? So I'm going to grab my and uh, my big shot. And I'll just line that up so it should cut in the right place. And that is a lot easier to get it into a circle than trying to cut around the design by hand. To finish this off, I just add a little bit of brown ink to the edges. And that's that piece all finished, and I'm ready to go and stamp the other piece, which is the greeting. 
for this I'm using a piece of patterned paper from Studio Calico which is um, called Focal Point from the Calico Classics collection and I'm using this thank you stamp from American this Craft. It's also going to be die cut but instead of a circle I'm going to use a scrolled square and that's this set also from Nestabilities and it's called Labels One Small. Since this piece has black ink, I'm going to use black ink around the edge rather than brown, just so they both match. And now I'm ready to start assembling the card. So I have this much done. I'm going to be adding this flat to the card and this on foam squares to bring it up a little bit off the surface. So this is roughly centered but just ever so slightly off to the side and press down and then I'll add some foam squares to this piece. And I won't take the backs off just yet, I'll be able to move it around and make sure I've got it in the place that I want before I take the back off. Now I'm going to add um, a little bit of baker's twine to add some texture here. So I'm going to put that underneath the small piece but above the big circle. On this one I use brads, but on this one I'm going to use some adhesive um, pieces over the top so they don't show through to and the back. For that I'm going to use these candy dots from Pebbles in brown. What I'll do is just add a little bit of adhesive there, just a tiny bit, just enough to hold the twine in place, and then pop the candy dot over the top. Now this won't work with anything that's very thick, but Baker's twine is quite thin, so it should adhere underneath without any trouble. And I actually want to cut this slightly wider than the card. And instead of being near the circle, I'm going to come right to the edge because this piece will be here. So again, just a tiny bit of adhesive to hold the twine in place. And then the candy dot over the top. And that way I can have a similar look but with a clean inside to the card. There's nothing, um, there's no prongs from the brads in the inside. So just, just a matter of whatever you prefer and how, what you want to cover up and what you don't. And then I can adhere this over the top and I'll put it just slightly at an angle. And this center is going to be close to that dot. Right, so this is most of it done and then I just want to add a little bit more heart embellishment. And I'm going to do that with the same pattern paper but with a few different little pieces. So this is um, that same pattern that I used on the first card. I had a little bit left over and the back has these larger hearts. So the larger heart in the design is just one that I've cut from the pattern paper with scissors. And the two smaller hearts I used a punch. And I cut one from, um, from a white piece of craft here and then just one from the red polka dots. I'm going to add a little bit of brown ink to each of the hearts and then I'll put foam squares on the back of all three of these and layer them up. So I'm just putting this in the empty space here next to the greeting and then to have some contrast, the lighter color, the craft one, will go on the red and just barely overlap the sentiment square there. And then this one will 
overlap collection but just slightly different patterns and I hope you enjoy this card I'd love to see it if you give it a try thanks for stopping by and you can see a bit more at shamel.com thanks <laughs>